Hello everyone! Welcome to Chats with the Farmer's Daughter Fibers. My name is Candace English and I am the Farmer's Daughter. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Um, I was just at a podcast like on Thursday. Today's Monday and so I know it's very quick turnaround for another podcast but I wanted to show you all the things that we have for Andrea Mallory's new sweater. And we just have so much going on. I don't want to miss out on sharing anything with you. Um, all of this goes out in the newsletter too. So sign up for the newsletter, but it's better to see it in person too, right? Um, if you have not joined us for a podcast episode yet, podcast blog, whatever, um, it's pretty relaxed. Um, it's very easygoing. I just chat a lot. Um, sometimes I go off on some tangents. I try to be funny. Um, and I usually talk about myself in the beginning of just like what I'm doing in my life um, and what I'm up to personally. And then I usually share things from FDF, what we have going on. And then I like to add like a little educational piece, whether it's knitting or dyeing or whatever. Um, I don't really have that today just because I'm like, I wouldn't say not prepared because I am prepared, but I just have too much going on that I can't do the educational piece today. Unless I just pull something out of my ass, but um that might not happen i also curse so if you have small children be aware sometimes things just fly out uh yeah so what am i up to i mean i like i said i just recorded a podcast so not as much has happened over the weekend i Ryder had a football game on friday it was homecoming and it was pouring down rain and so I went and decorated the float for the homecoming parade and it was pouring rain and it was still really fun. I love doing stuff like that. Um, and you know, here's the thing. I am, I've, when the kids were little, I was working as a child, um, a director of a child care center most of the time. I was either a preschool teacher or the director or assistant director. I kind of moved my way up in the company. And so I was busy. I was like night, I was like the hot mess mom, like, you know, rolling in to drop the kids off and then screeching out of there. Um, and I just didn't have a lot of times for like PTA or all of those things. Also, I've never been great at making like friendships with other parents. Um, and I think it's for a lot of different reasons. One, I'm not super social. Like I really need somebody to like introduce themselves and carry on like the initial part of the conversation. After that, I'm fine. But like just making that initial small talk. It's like, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I'm also a young mom, you know, writer 17, I'm 38. So when he was little, <laughs> it's always like, the hell? And I look, do I look 38? Imagine when I was 25, 30, I looked still like I was 15. And so, yeah, anyways, I'm not great at like, just the whole school involvement type of things. I'm getting better and that obviously comes with maturity. Um, and I'm more flexible with my schedule now too. I guess that's what I was trying to get at. Um, and so, sorry, I need some of this coffee. Um, so, you know, with this football stuff and like parent stuff, I really, really realize it's like parents who do all of these things. It's not like the school or whatever, you know, putting them together. It's whatever the parents effort and level is, is where the program is at in a lot of ways. And so the parade they had, you know, I mean, it was great. It was fine. It was jumping rain. We just had a trailer and we put a couple tents up and we had like this, you know, blue and light blue, like, I don't even know. Ugh decoration you know uh that like vinyl kind of plasticky um 
not string I don't even know decorations that we just like wrapped around it was great but I was like damn if I was like actually had some thought into like this float I would have like paper mache a life-size bison like I could go all out with this shit I'm not really sure I mean I would love to do something like that I one I don't have the time to do it but I would find time because I, again, I love being crafty and creative like that. But really at the end of the day, Ryder does not give a crap. He could care less. I mean, I'm sure deep down he cares. And later on in life, he might be like, wow, that was really nice of my mom. I don't know. Um, right now though, I can, he can like hardly acknowledge me. And actually they went by on the float and him and all of his friends were just trying to nail me with candy. So little turds. Uh, I don't know if you guys watch Reservation Dogs, but there's a lot of talking about shit-ass kids in there. That's what they were being, those shit-asses. So, but I love them. It was fun. And they had a great football game. They won. And Ryder had two touchdowns. And it was fun. And it was pouring rain. And it was still great. And yeah, so it was a good night. And then on Saturday, I taught a weaving class all day. That was good. And then my sister and brother-in-law and my little Willow decided to stay another night. They stayed on Friday night. They always come down for games. And they decided to stay another night. So I just got to hang out with them and chill. And yesterday worked out and then sat on the couch all day long and knit. It was perfect. I'm designing a cowl for our Celestial Countdown, which is sold out, unfortunately. Um, and does not have a wait list of any sort. <laughs> Oh, we've been getting a lot of emails about that. And so, yeah, I just I just knit on the design for that, which was exciting. Um, and then, yeah, so here we are. And tomorrow, Andrea is releasing the Big Cozy Cardi. And this is my sample. Um, we have an amazing sample knitter, Melissa. What is Melissa's um, Instagram? I might be able to find it on here. Let's see. I have my iPad and my computer. I'm so techy around here. Oh gosh, I don't I don't know if I can log into this. Nope. Well, Melissa is amazing and she does a lot of sample knitting for us. Um and so yeah, she did this. Oh no, my hair is coming out. That's gonna bug me. I haven't done my hair in like months. You just go through periods, you know, where you take care of certain parts of yourself and then other periods where you don't at all. So I just need a little bobby pin right there. Anyways, uh, Melissa, <laughs> well, like, see, I'm really going off on a tangent. Melissa um, knit this sample for us. We've had the sample done for so long and it's just been sitting there and all of us have just been like oogling it. So I'm going to stand up so you can see what it looks like on. Um, this is a size two. I have a 38 inch bust. Um, and honestly, I would definitely do it a size smaller. Like if it was me, I would size down one. Um, personally, I, I said this actually last time. I like my cardigan's a little bit more tight fitting. Obviously this is never going to be tight fitting, but just to be like a little bit more snug. Um, I really love it because I actually do like, I don't like things to cover my butt. Um, that's my greatest asset. Um, and so yeah, but look how cute and cozy it is. Um, perfect for traveling. I feel like like this will be my cozy traveling sweater and I just, I really love it. Um, and so I knit, I had our sample. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm sorry. I usually don't have to splice these things together, but the mailman showed up and rang the doorbell and the dogs were barking and I just didn't want you guys to have to experience that. I didn't want to experience that. Um, so I'm back. I also turned off my light, which makes the light in here much more natural. I was kind of wondering what was off. I never turned the light on, but I had woken up early to work this morning. We have lots of natural light. 
feel very lucky about that. My old house, it was like a dark little dungeon. Okay, anyways. <laughs> um, the sweater, the big cozy sweater. Uh, I talked about the size, that I would knit it a size smaller. Now the construction of this is really cool and I'll see if I can kind of show it to you. Um, it's a little bit like, it's not hard. It's super easy to put this thing together. Um, it's just kind of like conceptualizing it. Let me see if I can almost, so it's seamed together and you basically take, you basically knit this long rectangle. See that, that thing right there, you just knit this as a rectangle. Um, you start, let's see if I can find it. You start <laughs> kind of like up here where the sleeve is. Um, and then you're going to, once you have that, um, oh, here goes Kima. She's going to be barking. We're going to ignore her. She's naughty. Um, you basically have your rectangle, um, and then you're going to seam the edges of it. You're going to fold it in and then seam the edge right here. And on the pattern, Andrea has like all of these schematics that are very well explained. I'm not as good as explaining those things. Anyways, you basically seam it though, and you just leave this little, um, look at, this is how big you have to knit your sleeves. That ain't nothing. Um, you seam it right here, and then you are gonna leave like this part right here open, and you're gonna pick your stitches up and knit this little sleeve, and you do obviously the same on the other side. And then you're gonna go along and, there's again, measurements, all of the things for this. You're gonna go along and you're gonna pick up these stitches all along here to knit this collar. I absolutely love patterns like this. One time I knit this pattern called Le Envelope. I mean, I think that's what it was called. And it was almost, you did the same thing. You just knit this rectangle and then you just folded it and seamed in these certain places. And it was really, this really cool, like cross, like poncho-y, beautiful thing. I used to wear the shit out of that. Speaking of, that was during my old director days when I had to dress professionally. So glad I don't have to do that anymore. And then the way that you wear it is with obviously the collar on top. However, the girls at the shop, they had gotten the sample before I did. They were wearing it like this, which I'll stand up again. Ooh. Like, what's wrong with that? I mean, it's a little silly, but you could if you wanted to. Um, it looked, it looked better when we were doing it in the shop and being goofy. There's all these, I don't know what kind of bugs they are, but in the fall, they just like all over the side of our house and all inside upstairs. It's so annoying. And if you don't know, I'm from, I'm podcasting from my home today. Most of the time I'm at the shop, but... It was so annoying last time because there were so many people walking by, so much going on. I have to like wake up and be there at like six o'clock in the morning. It's going to be getting darker. So I think I'm going to be podcasting more from my home throughout the winter time, I'm guessing. So, okay. Anyways, um, yarn for this. I don't know if I talked about this or not because I had to pause. Um, but I'll just say it again if I didn't. I said it already then, sorry. Um, Andrea used Skydance for this. I used Chinook Winds, and this is Chinook Winds, and, um, oh, I used Recollect in Chinook Winds, and then this is Odang, obviously, in Cinepaw. Cinepaw or Mighty Mo? I think it's Cinepaw. Um, yeah. And I just really love this. I'm going to be honest. Besides, I'm going to, we're going to do a knit along for this. I think that we'll do the knit along 
in December, like after the holidays. Um, again, I don't know what I had to cut out and what I didn't cut out. So I'm sorry if this is like I'm repeating myself and this is annoying, but we're going to do a knit along after the holidays. Like Chris, like I think we start like around Christmas time and you're done with your holiday knitting. Maybe you have some vacation and you can just like chill and knit for a little bit. So I'm going to do a size smaller. Also, I'm going to do something monochromatic. I really regret doing two colors on this. I mean, this is beautiful. I love it. It's gorgeous. But I just know myself and I love like black and green and gray and like just things that are one, really one color. Um, or like, I don't know. I just think I would, I would wear it a lot more. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll leave this for a shop sample. Because I will, I mean, I'll wear this every day. Uh, like I said, I would wear this traveling. I will also wear it just like cozying up um, and knitting or reading or like relaxing. I would wear this um, running out if I was like going to run to the grocery store or something quick. I will say though, I don't know if it's something that I would wear if I was like running a bunch of errands and I was moving around a lot because there isn't like these structures, um, you know, kind of in here that it's just bigger and cozier and moves around a little bit more uh, where I want something, you know, I, I like things that are no fuss. If I was one of those like real classy gals that, you know, <laughs> wasn't moving around a lot and wasn't moving her hands all the time when she was talking, um, then maybe I could get away with doing that. But my pace is pretty, pretty quick when I'm out and about town. So I'd wear it up to dinner for sure. What a classy look though, right? Also, I mean, I don't really regret these colors because they really go well with my tattoo. So, but I'm still going to knit my own. Um, okay. So colors Andrea used Sky Dance Brooklyn General Sky Dance um and Catherine from Brooklyn General sent me all of the colors of Sky Dance so I just wanted to show you some combos that I came up with um Sky Dance is a Cormo Marino Romney and it's grown in New York and it is, is there a reflection? No, I'm just like, what's going on here? Um, it's grown in New York and it's hand dyed. I, I want to say somewhere I read it, it was plant dyes. Um, I could be wrong, but it's just beautiful. And look at these, the cutest little tags too. So this color right here, is Frozen Streams, and I paired it with I've Got Dreams to Remember. Now, all of these colors are monochromatic. I just wanted to do ones that matched, um, but you could definitely go outside of the box and not match. The combos were just like, I mean, we have so many colors on Odane. Catherine sent me on like 14 skeins of Sky Dance, and so I just, it was like, I just had to go with the monochromatic. I couldn't really choose otherwise. Although maybe I will show you a couple combos because I grabbed some other skeins of O'Day. And yeah, I've got Dreams to Remember and Frozen Streams. And then here's another blue one. Um, this one is I Wish I Had a River and Union Street State of Mind. And actually this color Union Street State of Mind is named after Brooklyn General. Um, they're on Union Street. And this color reminds me of Catherine and Brooklyn General. Come on, buddy. Yeah. So this one is a little bit darker. And this one is a little bit lighter, more like blue jeans. Right? Just wants to auto track my face. Little stinker. Okay, this is one of my favorite combos, and I would actually, I was thinking about maybe doing something like this. This is Ranch Romance and Harbortown, and Harbortown has 
It's blue greenish. It looks like the sea, like the foamy, beautiful sea. And then Ranch Romance, kind of the same thing, right? It's like that sea foamy, really pretty. I wonder if I have to, the um, sun is behind a cloud. I wonder if I have to turn my light back on. Oh, sumo. You are tired of hearing me talk to myself. This is a really beautiful plummy purple. It's called Get My Soul Free. Oh yeah. And then the other colors, BSN. And this color really reminds me of my dad. He wore a lot of purple shirts. Um, and I'd always say, what you doing, dad? When he was at this room. So. BSN. It's very... A man a few words. Um, this color is window jars and gosh it again it it kind of has these like tealy blues and then really pretty soft greens in it. You can kind of see that and I paired it with under or no this is holy matrimony sorry I gotta change that on the newsletter because I think I wrote it was undercurrent. And this is just a really lovely emeraldy green. I think that would be such a cool combo. And then I feel like it's really dark in here now. Dang, you mad at it? This would work. Oh, that's not even charged. As soon as I turn the light on, the cloud's gonna move. Oh yeah, I can already tell the sun might be coming back out. Okay, and then this is Coat of Flowers. Gosh, these, um, all of this sky dance is so pretty because it's so tonal, um, which makes me think it is plant dyed. So there are in, in Coat of Flowers, what would you, it's like pink-ish, purpley pink, but then there's these really beautiful, almost like lavender poking through. It's kind of hard to see probably on the camera. Oh yeah, you can almost get it right there though. Come on sunshine, come out baby. Get it right here. Yeah, it's like almost lavender and all like raspberry. And we put it with um, Pretty Shield. But I also think that Pretty Shield would go really well with maybe even more so. You know, I would almost do Cinepod with or a purple. Um, and even a lavender would look really pretty with this because... Because it is like just to pick up that lavender in here is so pretty. And I would do Canyon Lady in Pretty Shield because it has more reds in it. This has more reds and peaches and so does Pretty Shield. So that is actually what I would do with that. Which was maybe what I had for a combo when I took photos. But then they got all jumbled up because I had to take photos of just O'Dang. This is another one of my favorite spots on my apples, which is brown maroonies and yeah, like a maroon, reddish maroonish color. So pretty. And then Willow Creek, we put that with it. This would be one that you could wear every day. This is one of my favorite, okay. I'm sorry if I say that every single time I pull one out, but they're all my favorites. Um, I love this. I don't think that this is my color, but gosh, if this is your color, I think this would be so cool. This Dawn Dancer is like this really beautiful peach. And then the Lulu with it. Ooh, fun. Fun and funky. This Lulu, like as a collar, it's going to be all effervescent beautiful oh yeah um 
Hmm, yeah, I think I matched. So this is Cold Blue Street Steel. Cold Blue ST Steel, Street Steel. I wonder if the, what does it say? It's just kind of hiding. Blue Cold, oh, Steel. It's just called Blue Cold Steel. Um, It was written twice and some of it was hidden. So this is a steel color. It's gray, leaning blue a little bit. And I thought it would look really cool with Aquemini, which Aquemini is like, a steel plum. You could also do uh, Paul Newman with it too. I mean, that's a little bit more monochromatic. You could also do Winter Wolf as well. So this cold blue steel has a lot of a lot of different variations you could do with that. Um, another favorite combo of mine is Tin Angel and Come and Get Your Love. Now, Tin Angel is um, kind of a grayish steel leaning periwinkle. And the Come and Get Your Love is like a blue, sky blue. I think those would look so cool together. Oh yeah. yeah. Very pretty. And then Bear Gulch, where did you come from? Bear Gulch and this is Willow Creek on the right and Bear Gulch is on the left. And so those are the differences there. Bear Gulch is just a little bit richer, a little more maroon. And that's what, you know, I guess the Bear Gulch would match this a little bit better. And then Willow Creek is here. Either one. If you wanted one that was like a little more effervescent-y, I would do Willow Creek. And then that's what spots with spots on my apple. And Yellow Curtains and Dirty Little Dandelion. Oh, yeah, so pretty. Love that. Okay, and then we're getting to, this was Andrea's choice, was, well, okay, on the pattern it says natural. Um, I didn't get a natural. This is steamy kitchen window. I'm assuming that this is the natural. I mean, doesn't that look like natural to you? It's just, I love it. So pretty. And then she used Mr. Pocket. Mr. Pocket on Odang is a funky little bunch. He um, turns out very brownish, grayish compared to other bases. A lot of other bases, it turns out really green. Do not email me asking me why he's not green because he's not not green he's not on odang he's not like the other bases um i do a whole segment on one of my youtubes on mr pocket showing you all of the different ones but he really is like a really gray greeny neutrally really lovely honestly i love this combo and i would do this combo for sure and i would wear it every day this is my color though, Mr. Pocket. Any green. I was wearing so much green the other day. My daughter was calling me Kermit the Frog. And I really did look like Kermit the Frog. And my car's green. So it was just a little wild. This is actually the combo. Instead of doing Mr. Pocket, many moons. This is my favorite color right now. Though I just love the natural. So pretty. So that would be another good one if you're just wanting like a creamy <clears throat> sweater. And then for like styling this, you know, I'm wearing this jumpsuit. Um, I don't know. It's from Beyond Yoga. I don't know if they have any more of these. But I definitely will wear this with jumpsuits and leggings and tank tops. Um, 
I'm not big on like, uh, because my hips are a little bit wider or maybe it's because I, I have like a little bit of a tummy. I'm not big on like wide leg things and then wide tops. Like I want something tight fitting with this. So if you're thinking about colors in your closet, you can kind of think about that. Like, where are you going to wear this? How are you going to wear it? It would look really beautiful over like a straight silhouette dress. Um, yeah, I, I haven't stopped. I haven't played around styling it with jeans and I'm just not sure if maybe I have actually these black skinny jeans. I would wear a tank top with black skinny jeans in this. Maybe that would be my woolen folk outfit now that I think about it. Um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, Odane is all stocked on the website. And so you can go directly there. It only takes two skeins of Odang, no matter what size you do. Um, again, though, I'm just thinking, I don't want to say anything to like contradict Andrea or anything, but man, I think a lot of people could wear the size that I am wearing right now. Um, and we'll know more when her testers come out tomorrow and look through you know on Ravelry their projects to see what sizes they did and if they have any feedback so everybody on the sh in the shop tried this on um I'm gonna say that their bust sizes are between 38 and like 46 and 44 and this size fit them like perfectly um, I would say like the 44 to like 46 side drains bust, like this was perfect for them. So I recommend sizing down. That's my, I'm, I'm sticking with it. Um, and Skydance you can get from Brooklyn General. You know, this is, the Skydance really is a very special yarn because it is, um, you know, a blend that is a, special small batch that's the word I'm looking for a small batch blend and I'm just throwing all of this back in the little box so I can take it back to the shop um small batch hand dyed I mean really special yarn and you can get that directly from Brooklyn General I'm gonna put all of the links in the show notes and speaking of show notes um last podcast I had talked about like where you guys want to see show notes, if there's any other places that we could put them. And it kind of sounded like a lot of you would be interested in them being on the blog. Um, some people were like, this is fine to put it on YouTube. So thank you for everyone's feedback on that. I'm going to think a little bit more of it. And then when I get back in, you know, towards the end of October, I can really make a decision um, where the show notes want to live. But for now, they are right on YouTube, right on this uh, episode, right on this video, I guess I should say. So speaking of show notes, I gotta grab mine. Um, oh yeah, I'm excited. I'm like, is that, do I just have one more thing? But no. Okay, so this is, we did our celestial countdown and that's um, all Northern Lights themed. And I wanted to do something for the, um, for Halloween, basically for October, not necessarily Halloween. I love like Halloween and just this time of month, but I'm not big into like real traditional, like Halloween theme things. And so I like kind of witchy, spooky things like that, um, darker things. And so I wanted to put something together to... I have offer as a little kit. Um, these are limited. And so sometimes when I put these out, they're just like gone. They sell out so fast and then we're done. Um, other times they don't sell out as fast. It just kind of depends um, on people's interests and the time of year and all of those things. So hopefully when you're listening to this, if you're interested, there's still some left, but there's a good possibility that they'll go quickly. Again, 
can't really predict it. Um, so in this little witchy collab comes with this cute bat mug. I love these. We have not the bat mug, but we have other mugs like this in the shop. And I didn't talk about it last time. I actually forgot to show these mugs that we have. I really love them. Um, one, they're super cute and just like a really nice, simple, well-made like ceramic mug, but I'm kind of particular about my mugs. I hate when they're like so thick um, that it doesn't hold enough tea or coffee or whatever it is. It's like, I want as much space as I can. And they just, they fit nice in your hand. Um, and how cute is that little bat? Reminds me a little bit of Stella Luna. I don't know if you guys read that to your kids or not, but so it comes with the bat mug. And then in the bat mug, you can make yourself some sort of root beer mocktail or cocktail. Um, this is from Portland Syrups. We have lots of different kinds of these in the shop and online. Um, so this is really good. We, this is the first time we've gotten the root beer flavor. Um, this is my personal one. So it smells like root beer, but it has a little bit more of a natural, like sweet, almost like a vanilla background in it. I'm just going to taste it. Mm. Yeah, I'm not, oh my God, that's good. Um, I'm not big on like root, like I never would order a root beer. I would have a root beer float, um, but I would never just order like a root beer. Oh my God, this over ice cream would be so freaking good. Um, this in coffee would be really good. It doesn't have that strong, is it sarsaparilla? Sarsaparilla root. Um, yeah, so it's water, sarsaparilla root, star anise, clove, allspice, organic cane sugar, brown sugar, molasses, and vanilla flavoring. You can really, um, smell the vanilla and the star anise and clove and allspice like come out in the best way. So on Portland syrups, I'm just looking at my computer right now on Portland syrups and I'll link this. They have a lot of recipes that you can use. Oh my gosh. A root beer slushy. Yum. Um, the funcicle, funcle, <laughs> the funcle, just like your fun uncle. This mocktail is a twist on a classic. It's the perfect example of how adding a little oomph to your bedroom can totally transform something simple into something memorable. A splash will do. So this is, I mean, honestly, I have these like in my little bar area, but I use, and I have more syrups I'm going to show you guys too. I have a soda stream and I just use my soda stream and these syrups and that's what I drink. I don't, I mean, we don't really buy soda and those type of things in our house. We buy sports drinks, but, um, for myself, I just mainly use these with soda water, but this soda water, this and some half and half or a little bit of like creamer of your choice for oh, and some whipped cream on top. Mm. So good. Um, root beer shake. They have a recipe for a root beer banana bread with this stuff. And I'm telling you guys, I know it sounds like root beer and it's, you know, root beer can be such a strong flavor. This is not like that at all. Mmm. Oh, root beer root vegetables. Oh my God. Putting this on some vegetables and roasting them. I'm so glad that I... This is coming home with me now. It's staying here. So good. Okay, so I'll link that. So it has the mug, the Portland Starts root beer, this cute little froggy, and he is from Lively Ghost, little little witch frog on a broom. And then this Daily Ritual Hydrating Day Cream by Coral and Moss. Vitamin A, shea butter, aloe, essential oils of starflower, lavender, and sunflower. And it has... Mmm, yeah, 
You can see right there, perfect to keep in your knitting bag. And then we went with, I love this cowl. Um, this is by Natalie Bullock and she is also in Portland. Um, and it's just this really sweet little cowl. I love it. I think this would be an awesome gift for Christmas. So it comes with this pattern. It has a Ravelry scratch code. And then there are three different options of yarn um, sets. Here's one of them. So this is Pishkin. They're all either Pishkin. They're all either. <laughs> they're all Pishkin and Dream State. Not either. So you get the Pishkin and you get the Dream State. Um, this is, believe it or not, this is Shades of Earth. And I saw these and immediately knew. I wasn't sure what we were going to do, um, what pattern we were going to choose for the Witchy collab. But when I saw this, I knew it had to be in there because it is very purpley and teal and even a little bit of rust. It's very pretty. So that's one of the combos. So that is the witchy clap. I'm very excited. We've been sitting on this stuff for a while. So it's good to get it out in the world in people's hands. Okay. And then one last thing, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about the syrups that we have. Oh, and I want to tell you guys a little bit about what we're bringing to Woolen Folk. So I got to wrap it up because I got to get Addie to get her hair cut. But still about 10 minutes. Okay, these are, so in the shop, and I'll link them again, um, we have a lot of Portland syrups. Again, I love Portland syrups. Nothing is too sweet. Um, I like mixing them with champagne. Um, is mostly like if I'm drinking with alcohol, I'll do champagne. Or I just do like soda water, tequila, lime, and a Portland syrup. Or... Um, these syrups here that I'm about to show you. And again, like I said, I'm going to tag Portland syrups, the recipes on there. And if you go to their website, you can just go recipes and uses, choose whatever Portland syrup that you have, and then it will come up with all of the recipes. We have almost all of those on here, except for the vanilla, the Rose City tonic, and that's it. Like we literally have all of them because we are obsessed. So um, but then I found this company, um, El Guapo, and I think it's El Guapo sounds, it seems to me like it's right. Um, one of the reasons I got this is because they had a bitters and I love, love, love bitters. Um, bitters is, if you haven't had it, um, this one is made with glycerin, rose water, orange blossom, water, edible flowers, spices. This is the love potion. And so the way I've made bitters in the past is, you know, it's a combo of herbs that usually have like a bitter component in them. And then um, you soak them in alcohol and you're usually using like a really high ratio of herbs to alcohol. You let it sit and then you... Um, you actually let it sit in the alcohol and then you strain it out. So you strain all of your alcohol out. You keep your herbs like in a little jar and then you fill it up with water and let that soak for a couple of weeks. And then you strain that out and you mix the water and the alcohol. And that is how you can make bitters homemade. Um, I'm sure there's like way more technical, you know, ways of making bitters. Bitters is a really old type of say digestive, um, digestive, uh, not necessarily like an alcohol, even though a lot of times it's made with alcohol. I don't think these ones, these ones aren't, they can't be because, um, you're just selling them to the public. They make theirs with glycerin. That's a very similar the way you make tinctures, herbal tinctures, um, which are really good for you, uh, medicinally. My mom makes lots of tinctures and stuff like that um, and a lot of traditional medicine. So you can make it with glitter scent, glycerin or alcohol. Um, I prefer usually alcohol because I feel like it draws out the herbal remedies 
better but you wouldn't want to give the, that necessarily to kids or if you are sober this is a great alternative so um the bitters are there are four bitters that we have right now um I, again, just use mine with soda water and usually a lime and bitters, and that's like what I drink most of the time. You can also um, mix it with alcohol, like um, Manhattan's and Old Fashions have bitters. Um, again, I'll do like a tequila or a whiskey, soda water, lime or lemon, and a bitters. And so the four that we have are a Cuban. This one has sour orange, lime, cinnamon, and coriander. And it says it pairs well with rum, tequila, whiskey, and rye. And yeah, this one is really good. It's pretty, it's not, um, I would say sweet, but should I just taste it and tell you guys? Mmm. Yeah, you can taste the orange in it for sure. Oh my God, rum and soda and this. Yes, definitely with the rum and a little bit of orange. Mm, this would be such a good fall little cocktail too. I didn't even put a splash of orange juice in there. Maybe a tequila orange juice and this with a little bit of cinnamon, yum. Okay, this one's chicory pecan and it won a good food award winner chicory coffee louisiana pecans pecans i feel like pecans is the way to pronounce that tomato tomato though right literally have you ever heard anybody say tomato i have not pairs well with bourbon rye and whiskey oh yeah Mm. Okay, you can definitely taste the coffee in it. And it's a little bit sweet. Dude, I would put this over. I would put, I would take a little bit of ice cream and put a little bit of like delicious bourbon over it. And some of this on top. I would eat the shit out of that. Yum. Um, too bad I'm lactose intolerant and I can't have ice cream. Um, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head, like what I would make with this. I mean, they have, you know, what do you make when you do like, it's like vodka and creamer and like a coffee liqueur, right? I can't remember what those are called. Um, because I don't drink them that with this like this with vodka and like a like or even like a creamy like rum chata type of situation would be so good i <laughs> i would put this like in syrup with pancakes too or make something with it and usually like okay bitters if you get like real traditional bitters they're much more bitter. Like these don't taste bitter at all to me. Um, last time I, when I first tried these, I put them in a little bit of soda water and tasted them. And like, I guess I thought they were more of like a traditional bitters, but I think you, I would cook with this. I would make, I would make pancakes and put this in it with some like cut up walnuts and banana type of situation, I think would be really good. You could almost think of it as subbing it for vanilla, right? Um, love potion, this one is really good. Rose, jasmine, lavender, chamomile, and hibiscus pairs well with rum, vodka, gin, and champagne. I'm gonna tell you right now, I would do a gin, almost like a French um, 57, which there's a lemon cordial here too. This is a syrup, not a bitters. And I would, yeah, I would definitely do these two together. Let's taste it though. And it's cool, I love the, I love the branding and the packaging of this because 
it just looks so like old fashioned -y. and I love the label and the waxed um, lids, but they just twist off. Like it's not anything, you know, to do anything crazy. Okay, let's try this one. Mm. This one almost does taste a little bit more bittery than the other ones do. But Leia, like I said, I would pair it with that lemon cordial and some champagne. Maybe a little splash of gin in there. Um, this is the one that I've been drinking, though, just soda water. And... Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Okay, what? There's like, it does taste like rose and not in a bad way at all. Um, floral flavors, I think, sometimes can be sick. Not this one, that was really good. As I'm like, it's not a big deal, these lids are great. Can't get it back on. And then the Polynesian Kiss. I've also been drinking this one. You can see it's much, I think Xander's been drinking this one too. Mm. Oh yeah, is that one my favorite? Mmm. <laughs> Pineapple, coconut, passion fruit, and guava. I think that you could put this with anything. It says rum, vodka, gym, champagne. Same thing. I would put definitely add this to some little splash to some champagne. My mouth is watering because it's so good. Um also like doing pineapple and like some coconut. Okay. If you did like whatever alcohol of your choice or just soda water and you did like a little bit of coconut milk i'm gonna make this this weekend a little bit of coconut milk and you could add just trying to think what i would add i would do rum rum coconut milk a splash of pineapple juice and a shaker with some of this and maybe even I mean, I know that those are all like really tropical flavors, but I would put a cinnamon stick in there too and mix it up. Ooh, I found my drink for this weekend. Um, and we're having, I'm having friends over, so I'll make that for them. Okay, now on to the syrups. I'm taking way too long to chit chat about all of these, but they're so good. Okay, lemon cordial. This stuff is awesome. We had it at our anniversary party a couple weeks with champagne. I mean, it's it tastes like lemon tart in the best way. Also, cooking for this would be so good. Um, yeah, I don't need to taste this because I've been drinking it. Mm, it's so good. Ooh, I'm going to have to leave the house soon. I'm going to make myself a little mocktail to take with me. Uh, sweet potato syrup. Okay, sounds so weird. You guys, it is so good. This says pour two ounces of whiskey or rye and 20 or a quarter of an ounce of sweet potato syrup, two dashes of bitters. I would pair, I would, I would pair the Cuban or even that Polynesian kiss. The Polynesian kiss is interesting because it seems like it's, it is like kind of tropical, but it has something in it that's also a little bit savory. This smells like the sweet potato and marshmallow situation you make at Thanksgiving. Um, we've been drinking it, I've been drinking it, I've been trying to get everybody to try it, but I think they're scared of the sweet potato, um, which is fine. This is mine now. They don't get it anymore. I've been putting it in my coffee and it's really good. Um, so I would use, okay, so, sorry. Whiskey, sweet potato syrup, dash of bitters. I'm gonna use a Polynesian kiss. Um, and then you pour it in a glass and stir until chilled. I would shake it and then I would strain it with one of those big rocks and put a little orange twist on it. You guys, this is so good. Also really good to cook with. Any type of like with vegetables, this would be freaking awesome too. Um, damn, I would even put this in like a soup if I wanted it, like a curry soup. Yum, it's so good. Okay, and then this is a Creole, 
I don't know how to pronounce this, you get, it's O-R-G-E-A-T, but I looked it up and I think it's egret, egret. Um, I don't know what exactly that means, what egret is, but I know that it is some sort of syrupy situation. I don't know what makes it different than a regular syrup. I will find out and you can ask me or we can Google it. Okay, this is kind of the same thing. Whiskey, rye, um, this, bitters, um, strain into a low ball over one large rock, garnish with an orange twist. What is the difference between the sweet potato and the creole? Mmm, with Georgia pecans. This made Garden and Gun, Made in the South 2020 awards, baby. Mm, much sweeter and it has what the heck is that the pecans and some sort of spice mm, both of them so perfect for this time of year so yeah i'm gonna go have to make myself a little mocktail before i leave the house and i'm so glad i have my my cocktail this weekend it's gonna be so good Okay, what else do we have? I think that's it. You know, this has been a long episode because I've been showing so many versions of things. Um, I'm not even gonna talk about what I'm reading or watching and stuff. I picked up a book and I think I last, on Thursday I was reading one book, it just wasn't right. And I think this one is going to stick. Do I remember the name? No, is that okay? Yes. So I think that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this installment and let me know if you have questions about the sky dance, the cowl, the witchy thing, the El Guapo. Um, giveaway this week is going to be two skeins of Odang. So you can get started on your big cozy cardi. Um, yeah, I just love this thing. Okay, thank you for being here with me, and I will see you guys in a couple weeks. Oh, Woolen Folk, I'm going to be at Woolen Folk um, next week, which is October 14th. It's from noon to four, or noon to seven, I'm sorry. If you are in town for Rhinebeck, get tickets, come. It's going to be awesome. There's going to be food, music, tons of vendors. Um, me and Rachel from Spin Cycle are sharing a booth, and we are going to have... Um, some really fun kits that we've made together. Uh, I dyed some of her yarn and she dyed some of my yarn. And uh, Brian Moody made a cowl to kind of go with it. So the colors are really cool um, and really fun. Jessie May came out with the Northwood Stripe Sweater. It gets released not tomorrow Tuesday, but the next Tuesday, which I think is the 11th. Um, so we're going to have kits for that. That is with both Ritual Dyes and Farmer's Daughter Fibers yarn. And then, um, so many releases during this time. Um, uh, <laughs> Jen Berg is releasing the coolest color work. It's called the Eye Dazzler, beautifully inspired sweater. And that is with Recollect and Reminisce Worsted and spin cycle and I'll have samples of all of these things here. So I'm bringing the I lots of kits. The only single skeins of things I'm bringing is the worsted. And then I'll bring spin cycle, dyed in the wool and um, dyed in the wool and dream state for those you can kind of create your own kit. So, okay, I think that's it. <laughs> Um, yeah, if you haven't got tickets for that and you're going to be in town, get them. I'd love to see you guys in person. And then otherwise I'll be at Rhinebeck on Saturday, um, probably for like that podcaster Ravelry meetup time. Maybe, I don't know. Sometimes I get a little overwhelmed once I get in those situations. So who knows? Um, I'll be buying fleeces and hanging out. So, um, if you want to say hi, please do. And okay, I think that's it. All right, I'll see you guys around soon. Bye.